Welcome sports fans to the most exhilarating time of the year. That's right, we're talking about March Madness. March Madness is where brackets get busted and legends are made. I am Matt Modai, and today we are diving into the deep world of college basketball betting, bringing you the top 10 March Madness bets with pretty juicy odds so you can cash big. Whether you're a seasoned sports better or you're just dipping your toes into the world of sports wagering, we've got you covered. In this video, we've got Cinderella stories, powerhouse matchups, futures, everything you need where the thrill of the game meets the thrill of winning. So let's lace it up, let's hit the court and reveal our top 10 March Madness bets for this year's tournament. But before we get into that, I wanna to talk to you about a way you can get a one year premium subscription to betting pros. So if that sounds good, if you are interested at a chance to win a premium one year subscription to betting pros, it's a place where you can start betting smarter, not harder. All you need to do is comment on this video and subscribe to the betting pros YouTube channel. That's it. Subscribe and comment. And that's how you are going to be entered. We will announce a winner right here on this channel. Make sure to turn notifications on so you can be alerted when new episodes drop, come in and claim your prize. Now let's get to our picks. We're going to have some game picks, some futures, all that stuff. Our first one, bet number one, we're taking James Madison University Moneyline. Them to win straight up, JMU, plus 190 odds at DraftKings. This is going to be against Wisconsin, of course. The best part of March Madness is predicting upset picks, Cinderella's to make deep runs into the tournament. And you got to call your shot. And my number one upset pick is JMU Moneyline against Wisconsin. If you haven't heard of JMU, they're a university in Virginia. They're in the Sunbelt Conference, and they just rolled through that conference. They've won their last 13 games heading into the NCAA tournament. If you were to hear about JMU, it might have been at the beginning of the season. They played in Michigan. They played at Michigan State when Michigan State was ranked number four in the country, and they beat them. In terms of the JMU team themselves, they averaged the 10th most points per game in the entire nation. And the reason why I like them to win this game and to go on a run in the tournament is they're led by two guards and they have a very dynamic backcourt. They have Terrence Edwards who averages about 17 and a half points per game. And then they have a transfer from Boston College whose name is TJ Bickerstaff. He averages about 13 and a half points per game. Now, looking at Wisconsin, they did make a run of the Big Ten tournament, right? They beat the Big Ten regular season champ, Purdue, in the semifinals of the Big Ten tournament before falling to Illinois in the finals. But for this matchup, we're fading the five seed against JMU. Bet number two, and we're going with another upset pick for this one. We're taking Vermont Moneyline. This is Vermont over Duke, plus 550 odds at DraftKings. Now, this admittedly would be a pretty massive upset. Obviously, you want to unit size accordingly with this one maybe only put a quarter unit, but I love taking these 12, 13 seeds to upset in the first round. These types of seeds are popular upset picks. The reason why is because generally the 12 or 13 seed is a smaller mid-major school, mostly unheard of, that ends up winning their conference. And they get matched up against a blue blood, big name team in a power five conference that might not be as good as their name suggests, or just might not have had a good year overall. So you get these opportunities where a really talented but unheard of team goes up against a big name team, but the smaller team might honestly have the more talent. In terms of this matchup with Vermont, they're a tournament regular. We all remember the run they made in the late 2000s when they went on a final four run and beat Syracuse. That was very, very exciting. Unfortunately, they are 0-4 in the tournament since 2017. That's something that I like to change. Part of my philosophy when I am predicting these upset picks, basically predicting a mid-major to do something special, in my opinion, this is my own ethos, is they need to have some sort of elite skill. Now they are similar to JMU where they won their last 10 games, they've won 19 of their last 20 games. But the reason why I could see them making an upset against Duke in this matchup is they play at an extremely slow pace and they're one of the best defensive teams in the nation. Now Duke is obviously way more talented, right? They have an incredibly talented team, Kyle Filipowski, one of the best players in the nation. But if Vermont can slow the pace down, play really stout defense and make enough shots I could see this being a game in which they're able to steal it from Duke. And for plus 550 odds, the value is absolutely there. Now for our third pick, we're taking James Madison University to reach the Sweet 16. This is plus 750 odds at DraftKings. Honestly, if our first two predictions come to pass, JMU will play Vermont and the winner of that game will go to the Sweet 16. So this is basically saying, hey, if I'm able to correctly call my shot on my first two upset picks, this plus 750 odds at DraftKings would be an extreme value on JMU to make the Sweet 16. Now, obviously, both of those things need to happen, and that would be crazy. 
But if that happened, JMU would probably be favored to go to the Sweet 16 if both teams win their upset rounds in the first round. So I'll just go ahead and ride with my prediction that both JMU and Vermont are going to win. And I'll take it even one step further that JMU will win the matchup of those two teams and reach the Sweet 16. As for bet number four, this is our final upset pick of the first round. Grand Canyon Moneyline plus 190 odds at DraftKings. So part of what makes March Madness so fun is the heartwarming storylines, right? Falling in love with the player, with the team or whatever. And I don't think there might be a better story than if Grand Canyon makes a run in the tournament. The reason why, if you're unfamiliar, is they have someone on their team named Tyon Grant Foster. Not only is he just an incredibly talented player, one of the best talents in the nation, but he has a great story as well. He's formerly from Kansas and DePaul, but you haven't seen him play college basketball for the previous two years, right? He missed two years due to having a heart condition, right? He had heart problems, missed two years. He was finally able to return this season and he averaged almost 20 points per game. He was unlocked by the Grand Canyon head coach. And I gotta say, Grand Canyon also just has a legitimately talented roster, right? Their head coach, like I said, brought the best out of the team, out of Grant Foster. So this isn't just a play from the heart saying it would be really nice if they won. It's also a legitimately good team who has some talent and could easily make a run. And if that happens, this story is a narrative, is a story, the media, everybody is just gonna eat it up. So let's hope that that comes to pass as our final upset prediction of the first round. Now we start getting to some futures, and for our next prediction, we are taking Illinois to reach the Elite Eight plus 270 odds at DraftKings. So Illinois is one of those teams, they have the potential to either win the championship or they could honestly lose in the second round. I don't really see them losing their first round matchup, but they are one of those teams that could make a deep run or get bounced early. The reason why is because of their offense and defense splits. They have the potential to have the best offense in the entire nation. If you just look at advanced stats, according to Ken Palm, they have the third best offense in the nation. They're only behind Connecticut and Alabama, but they have the 93rd ranked defense. So if they have a game where they just can't score, they absolutely have the defense that could get them bounced early. Again, probably not the first round, but I could definitely see them losing in the second round. The kind of confusing thing about Illinois is they have the individual talent on defense for whatever reason, they just really weren't able to put it together. Now they are in a pretty tough bracket. They're in the bracket with UConn, with Auburn. They do have the talent on defense though, the individual talent. So it's just been something that they haven't been able to put it together. If they can, they could definitely make a run. One issue with Illinois is that they're in a really, really tough bracket. They in the bracket with UConn and Auburn. So that's kind of why I put them in the Elite Eight and not the Final Four, because they could reach the Elite Eight and then they would have to most likely play UConn or Auburn. Luckily for Illinois, is one team that I do really want to fade in this bracket is Iowa State. I'm not a fan of Iowa State. I'm not a fan of the Big 12 in general. Iowa State does have one of those teams where they have an elite skill, right? Like they have the best, according to Ken Palm, the best defense in the nation. But they're kind of like UVA where they can get slowed down on offense. And if they have a game where they get down early, they just don't have the offensive firepower to come back. And I could easily see them losing even before Illinois, making it so Illinois has a pretty easy trip to the Elite Eight, cashing this for us. Next up, our sixth bet of the video. For the West region, I am taking North Carolina to win the West region and make the Final Four, plus 230 odds at DraftKings. This region, the West, is probably the toughest one for me to predict. And I know you're saying, oh, in the toughest region, you're just taking the one seed. But I do like UNC, and I think they have a great opportunity to make a run in this year's tournament. Looking at Ken Palm, they're the ninth best team in the nation with the sixth best defense and the 24th ranked offense. So the recipe for UNC is there. Play stout defense, sixth best is pretty good, and rely on your shot making guards to just make enough shots and Armando Baycott to just dominate down low to make a run. They're gonna need RJ Davis and Cormac Ryan to step up in the tournament if this is going to happen, but those two guys can do that. They're talented enough to do that. And the recipe for UNC is there. We just saw it two years ago, right? We saw them have enough playmakers and Caleb Love, but RJ Davis, Brady Manick, in that run two years ago to make a run to the final four, or actually to the championship game. In this case, we're just taking them to the final four. So that's the recipe. Stout defense, shot making guards. And for this region, Arizona is definitely going to be a threat. And I will admit Arizona top to bottom is probably the better team than UNC, but they have a tougher draw to make it this far, right? I kind of like the teams that they would possibly play in the second round. I could see them getting upset by either Nevada, the 10 seed or the 11 seed in New Mexico. And if that happens, then obviously it would just make it an easier run for North Carolina. So for plus 230 odds, I'd like the value on them to reach the final four. 
That number seven, I will admit this is probably gonna be my spiciest take of the video, but I'm taking Kentucky to win the South region at plus 700 odds. Again, definitely one of my spicier takes. And Kentucky is kind of like Illinois, where they have the potential to make it all the way to the finals, or they have the potential, probably even lower potential, obviously, than Illinois. They could lose in the first round. There's like no outcome of events that would surprise me with Kentucky. They have the fifth ranked offense and the talent to make a run on offense, but their defense is all the way down to 108th ranked defense. That is just disgusting. It's a worse defense than Illinois. They just cannot guard anything on ball. So the logic is that their offense just is amazing. Their offense, instead of playing like the fifth best, goes up to literally the best and their defense just performs mediocre. If that happens, they could just go on a heater and make a run in the tournament, kind of similar to what Miami did last year in the tournament. They rode their offense and mediocre defense all the way through a tournament run. If Kentucky is going to be able to make this run, they're going to need Marquette, the two seed in their bracket, to get bounced early. If those two teams match up, I have a hard time seeing Kentucky being able to win that. Marquette, I think, is one of the worst matchups for Kentucky, but I could also see Marquette get bounced early. They're a well-balanced team. They're 12th, according to Ken Palm overall, 21st ranked offense and 19th ranked defense. So while they are a balanced team, they don't have that elite trait that I look for. So if Kentucky, like I said, if that elite offense just catches a heater, their defense plays mediocre, they could absolutely go on a run. All right, three more plays. And now we're getting to the nitty gritty of final four predictions, championship predictions, all that stuff. And for our eighth pick, I'm taking Purdue to make the championship plus 280 odds at DraftKings. If this prediction comes true, Purdue would be one game away to completing what UVA did, where you lose to a 16 seed, and then the very next year, make a deep tournament run. Obviously, UVA ended up winning the championship. I'm not gonna tell you right now if I have Purdue winning or not, but I do think that they get there. And one thing that I wanna be very, very clear about is this is not the same Purdue team that got bounced in the first round last year. Everybody wanted to clown them, and I completely get it. That team last year relied heavily on two freshman guards that were clearly wearing down once they got to the tournament and they were just turning the ball over everywhere. Now those same two guards, they're a little bit more experienced, Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer, sophomores, and they also have the benefit of getting transfer guard Lance Jones as well. Lance Jones has been very good as a playmaker this year. And honestly, Braden Smith, like he's turned himself into one of the best point guards in the nation. I also like the fact that Purdue probably has the easiest path to at least getting to the Elite Eight. And the bracket that UConn in, we haven't quite gotten into that, but UConn is in such a tough bracket with Illinois, Iowa State, even though I'm not on Iowa State, that top ranked defense could make a run in the tournament. And then Auburn, who we're going to get to, who I'm very high on. So it's a tough path for UConn. So if UConn does get bounced early, immediately that would make Purdue the betting favorite. And you got to hope that that does happen because, I mean, they those two teams would meet in the finals, but I just don't see Purdue beating UConn. But they would have to get to the finals in order to do that. And I think they have a great opportunity to do so. Two more, and my second to last pick is a team that I just hinted at, Auburn, to reach the championship game, plus 650 odds at DraftKings. Now, they don't have this market. If a market existed that was titled, most likely to be this year's version of UConn, Auburn will be the betting favorite for that market, right? Last year, UConn was the fourth ranked team in the nation, according to Ken Palm, but they were only a four seed. This year, Auburn, the fourth best team in the nation, according to Ken Palm, but they're only a four seed. They're also heading into the tournament just on a ridiculous run, an absolute heater, very similar to UConn last year. So Auburn is coming into the tournament with an absurd stat that 26 of their last 27 wins have been by double digits. So not only have they been beating teams, they've just been crushing the teams that they beat. Last year, UConn had done that in 19 of their last 25 wins heading into the tournament, meaning they had been by double digits. Obviously last year, UConn won every single game by double digits. We'll have to see if Auburn has that type of run in them. And like I said, it's a tough bracket. That bracket, the top four is UConn, Illinois, Iowa State, and Auburn. Now you could go chalk and just take UConn. I think they're the best team in the nation. I wanted to be a little bit different for this video and I could easily, easily see Auburn making a run. And if that happens, plus 650 odds, very juicy. All right, so now we are on to the national championship. We have Purdue versus Auburn, and I am predicting that Purdue wins the national championship. They complete the UVA Cinderella run. This is at plus 600 odds at DraftKings. Like I said, they just have to hope that it's not UConn that they meet in the finals because I have a hard time seeing them beating UConn. UConn has the big men to keep up with Edie, but just better talent around them. But 
If it is our prediction that comes true, that it ends up being Auburn as opposed to UConn out of that side of the bracket, then like I said, Purdue would immediately become the betting favorite to win. Obviously they still have to be alive for that. But I just think that this team is gonna be a popular upset pick to get upset, I should say, because of what happened last year. And I just think that it's a completely different team. So I love getting Purdue to win the national championship. Let's hope that comes true. And there you have it, folks, the top 10 March Madness bets, your ticket to the winner's circle in this electrifying tournament. Remember, of course, as always, to bet responsibly, enjoy the ride as the madness unfolds as the hardwood. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and comment on this video to get entered a chance to win a one-year premium subscription to the Betting Pros uh, premium subscription. And that's all we got. I am Matt Modai signing off. I wish you all the best luck on your picks. May the odds be ever in your favor. And until next time, take care and happy betting.